The sport of Formula One attracts some of the greatest minds from all across the globe in the areas of engineering, technical innovation, marketing, leadership, and every now and again, driving ability. Their ability to manufacture these things and make them lap a track a billion times faster than anything else on this earth is a miracle to behold, and thus attracts a wealth of people who watch the gladiators of the world joust in technological eye candy. Although not all of said people are the brightest spark plugs in the engine bay, put it that way. In fact, there have been some who have seen these things zoom across the landscape and thought, I know, I'ma join the track with them on foot. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Of course, back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, there was no social media to speak of. But of course, it wasn't all good news. So, fans kept themselves amused after the race by attempting to touch the race-winning car while it was moving. This involved the novel process of jumping the fence and running onto a live racetrack, gifting the Grand Prix winner a post-race minigame of avoiding putting any one of those 100,000 spectators through a 200 mile an hour cheese grater. Sometimes I couldn't even wait for the chicken flag to fall before running out. Instances like the 1992 British Grand Prix and pretty much every Italian Grand Prix that ever happened. But if we're talking about proper racing conditions, there have been a handful of times where lunatics took their chances. The German Grand Prix of the new millennium was the 11th round of the championship. A close championship. At least it was once Ferrari remembered they was Italian and started blowing their cars up every couple of rounds. In this race, however, Michael Schumacher's Ferrari did not blow up. Although that was because it didn't have a chance to. Giancarlo Fisichella neglected to brake for the first corner and kind of rammed into the back of him. It sent them both into the barriers and out of the race, which was a not so ideal tactic of scoring points. This was all music to the ears of Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard, who were running away in those McLarens, whose underbody exhausts were music to the ears of everyone else around the Hockenheim ring. Which, back in those days, was a pure unbridled scream through a wood. It was a lot of racetrack for security to guard, with 24 laps in the books. Whilst the Mercedes-powered McLarens were running away to victory, a different type of Mercedes power would change the complexion of the whole race. This guy, clearly not in the right frame of mind, decided to invade the track in between the first and second corners. See, the man in question used to work on the Mercedes production line in Le Mans, France for 22 years, before being released on medical grounds, which he did not take too kindly to. To exact his revenge, he decided to take his dissatisfaction out with Mercedes on a very public level. At the French Grand Prix two rounds prior, he tried to venture onto the track, but only got as far as the pit lane before being carted off to Le Bastille. He then tried his luck at the German Grand Prix. He initially tried to run onto the track just before the start of the formation lap, but again, he was hauled away. But then, on lap 25, third time lucky, he got onto the track and started wandering down the straight toward the pit lane, wearing a poncho that bore a myriad of anti-Mercedes slogans. Only difference between this and modern day F1 fans was that at least this guy's reasons were not so trivial. After being ushered away and handed over to the authorities, he was released on bail the next day. But his want to punish Mercedes-Benz did pay off, because McLaren, the team that carried Mercedes engines to victory throughout the late 90s and early 2000s, got royal screwed over by this guy. The safety car came out to give the marshals an opportunity to escort him off the track. And with the field bunched up and the McLaren pit wall in a slight haze of disarray, it allowed the Ferrari of Rubens Barrichello to close up, pass Hakkinen, and win the Grand Prix. His first Grand Prix, it must be said. In the end, this guy was rewarded compensation from Mercedes-Benz for his dismissal. He also apologized, claiming that he was actually a supporter of McLaren and that he didn't realize that what he did had actually cost them the race. Funny. You would think that after 25 laps with no lead changes, it would have been easy to keep tabs on who was winning the race. So much for being a supporter. After that, we never really had any more lunatics try and invade the racetrack. At least until 2003. Back in 2003, when Formula 1 wasn't entirely one-sided, we had a scintillating battle for honours amongst the Ferraris, Williams, Renaults and McLarens. This particular race was interrupted after 6 laps by, you guessed it, an errant headrest that had dislodged from David Coulthard's car. It lay in the middle of the racetrack and bought out the safety car. We eventually got back racing again, but only for a couple of seconds, for it appeared that Sir Jackie Stewart had congested the wrong type of mushrooms. Oh no! Oh my goodness me! Just like Hockenheim a couple of years ago, we've got a lunatic on the track down the hangar Your eyes do not deceive you. That is a dude in full kilt running down the hangar straight, head on toward Formula One cars. The joker in the act here is Neil Horan, a lay-sized Irish Roman Catholic priest and human sh**. 
Chastain. He claimed that after seeing an opening to a live racetrack being a sign from God, he decided to run down the street, brandishing signs saying, read the Bible and the Bible is always right. I don't know, is there really not a passage in there that does not say, thou shall not run down thy racetrack, you gigantic melt? Thankfully, a hero by the name of Stephen Green tackled this lunatic down to the ground and dragged him off the racetrack. Following this, he was jailed for two months after pleading guilty for trespassing and being a general nuisance to society. Also thankfully, Bernie Eccleston did not attempt to use this opportunity to take away the Grand Prix contract from Silverstone after likening the track's facilities to a cave. The race also wasn't very much ruined and still had an awesome showing with Rubens Barrichello winning in style. Although it does seem to me that this guy likes to win races when people start running onto the racetrack and the man who tackled Horan was awarded the BRAC Browning Medal for outstanding bravery in tackling a track invader during the 2003 British Grand Prix at Silverstone. The second recipient of the award after David David Purley, who back in 1973 had heroically attempted to save Roger Williamson's life at Zandvoort. Horan, meanwhile, continues to plague the world with his existence to the present day. But fortunately, he's kept himself well away from the sport, and after that, no one else attempted to invade a Formula 1 track for 10 months. The 2004 Spanish Grand Prix, legendary match invader Jimmy Jump ran onto the Catalonia circuit, waving a banner that no one could read as a genius had it backwards. Thankfully, the cars were on the other side of the circuit on their parade lap. He was tackled to the ground, dragged away, and for a long while after that, nothing actually happened. No one else dared run onto a live racetrack again. Though I never said it never happened again though. We all dream of having a go in a Formula 1 car at some stage in our lives. But for one man in Shanghai, they decided to take the initiative. He got up from his seat in the main grandstand, scaled a 10 foot catch fence that surrounds the circuit, and proceeded to run across the start finish straight toward the pit lane. Whilst free practice 1 was happening, cars running around there at full tilt. But this guy... Well, he didn't care, but there was method behind that madness. He hopped the pit wall, ran down the pit lane, arrived at the Ferrari garage and said, I want to try the car. Oh yeah, sure bruh, here's the keys. Just try and keep it under the limit and you know, you'll be sweet. He was duly arrested, taken away, and the weekend went on as per usual. In other words, Mercedes ran away to victory. In fact, they only ever lost three races that year, the last of them being in Singapore, and that race had another interesting fan encounter. Sebastian Vettel was enjoying quite a nice race. The car was hooked up, he was leading the whole way, his main rival in the championship was having engine issues. Couldn't have gone any better really. Although the sight of a man just taking a stroll along the back straight, taking a freaking selfie all the while, would have taken him a bit by surprise. The man in question was a British citizen who suddenly found himself in a Singaporean jail with a bail that he couldn't afford. His leisurely wander bought out the safety car, but thankfully it didn't really affect the outcome of the race. It wouldn't be the last time that Singapore would have an on-track intruder, although most of the time, they were just lizards. Although when it comes to track invaders, the one that a lot of modern fans would remember is from the 2022 British Grand Prix. When the race was stopped, after Joe Guan Yu was dumped on his lid, a bunch of Just Stop Oil supporters hopped the fence and sat down along the Wellington Strait, hoping that the watching masses in the crowd would look at their actions and think, putting themselves and drivers in danger, and interrupting an event that I paid hundreds, even thousands of pounds for? They seem like my kind of people. Their reasons for the protest? Environmental issues, of course. Noble reasonings. And they were supported by Sir Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel, Fernando Alonso, and Carlos Sainz. But all agreed that sitting in the middle of a live racetrack is one way to get you minced and lose favour with the people whose event you just disturbed. Seven people were arrested, six were charged, and in the end, only one person got completely screwed over that day. It of course was Charles Leclerc. So yeah, track invasions are hardly a new thing, and odds are they'll happen again. It's human nature to do something catastrophically stupid, even in a sport that attracts some of the best and brightest minds out there. But let it be known to all those would-be track invaders out there, in your eyes, you may be a crusader for good, or a hero to yourself or your mates. But to everyone else, you're just a manus. And if you really are hell-bent on being one, just do what every other stupid person does when it comes to Formula One. Create an animated Formula 1 YouTube channel.